Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's card making video. Today I'm going to show you how I made this card and after that I'm going to show you some other ways of decorating the cake element of this card. Today I'm working on mixed media paper because I'm going to do some ink blending with Catherine Pooler inks and I find that dye inks just blend much better on a mixed media paper because it's got a bit of a coating on it that stops the dye inks from soaking in too quickly. The first thing I did with this was to die cut all my shapes out. This cake element has several pieces to it. It's got three cake layers, three strips of icing, one for each layer, and a candle and a cake stand. Once those pieces were cut, I put them on my grip mat and blended on some, I think this is party dress on the bottom. No, it's be mine on the bottom cake. Then pixie dust on the middle cake. And I think it was then party dress on the top layer of the cake. And I'm just slowly building up color, adding it layer upon layer to make it as even and smooth as possible and to try and get all three layers to be a similar saturation of colour. To give my cake a background, I took a square of smooth white cardstock and ran it through an embossing folder that had a cascading flower pattern on it. I just thought this would be a really nice backdrop. And then I cut my cake stand out of silver glitter paper. I cut two of those out so that I could add layers to my die cut so it looks a bit more three dimensional. So I added just the piece that the cake is going to sit on, on top of a complete stand. And then I trimmed off the bottom and then I stuck that on top of the bottom of the piece that I trimmed off to make the top, if you see what I mean. And it just creates a nice set of layers, makes the cake stand look a bit more dimensional and realistic. Once that was all solidly glued down, I added my cake layers, one on top of the other, and then I added my icing. Next I took the embossed panel and stuck it on a slightly larger panel of smooth white cardstock to give it a border and to neaten the edges I took an embossing tool and ran it round all four sides of both panels and that just bevels the edges and gives them a neater die cut look. I then took this whole piece and glued it onto the front of a five and a half by five and a half inch card blank made from smooth white cardstock. And I placed that centrally because I wanted a symmetrical background for my cake. Before I stuck my cake down though, I added some bits of card to the back of my cake, two layers on each layer of cake, just to help it stay level on the card. There's actually quite a few layers to this cake once everything's stuck together, so it needed to be leveled out. I hope you can see what I mean. Once I'd added my cake to my card, I took my little silver glitter candle, added some glue to that and then popped it in the middle of the top layer of the cake. And obviously you can add as many candles as you like to the top of the cake. For my sentiment, I decided to stick with silver and I found a nice scripty happy birthday stamp, stamped that in embossing ink, and then heat embossed it in silver, as I say. And once that was done, I cut it out using its coordinating die and added it to the front of the card. 
I did cut the shadow piece a couple more times out of white cardstock and layer them up before adding that to the back of my stamped sentiment piece. And the reason I did that was because I wanted the sentiment to overlap the cake slightly so I needed to add some extra card to the back of the sentiment again to keep it level and stop it flapping around. So once I had the sentiment stuck down I decided I wanted to add a little bit more decoration to my cake so I brought in my Nouveau drops in a white blizzard so they're glitter drops and added that to the icing so the icing has got a bit of glitter on it. Now as promised I'm going to show you several more ways of decorating your cake of zhuzhing it up because sometimes the clean and simple look is nice but sometimes you want to add a bit more pizzazz to your card. So stick around and I will show you how I made several more cakes with, as I say, a bit more pizzazz, a bit more zhuzhed up. The first way is to add some texture with an embossing folder. This is a Cuttlebug embossing folder called Mosaic and it's got a, I guess it's, it looks almost kind of Moroccan tile-ish. And I want to add the embossing with the raised portion pressing down into the front of the paper. So I'm going to get a recessed pattern. You could do it the other way with the fine line pattern uh, facing up. But I wanted it pushed down for this one because this idea was inspired by the birthday cake that my sister-in-law made for my niece this year. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the cake pieces from this and I want it symmetrical. I've put the washi tape along the outside because I don't want to risk damaging the inside of the die cuts. So that has squashed the pattern ever so slightly, but not enough to make a difference really to what I want to do next. And what I'm going to do next is ink blend over my die cuts. And this will bring out the pattern a bit as well as adding colour. I'm going to add a little bit of extra ink down the bottom of each cake piece, each cake layer just to imply some kind of shadow. And hopefully you can see that the recessed part, the pressed down pattern is a little bit lighter. Now I'm gonna take my cake pieces and layer them up. going to add my icing, my frilly bits. And on my niece's cake, there were some little silver balls where the pattern kind of crossed over. So, whoops, I do have these tiny pearls, which I think would be perfect, but I don't think I've got quite enough of the smaller size. So I'm going to use these gems and I'm going to place them, as I say, where the pattern kind of crosses and meets. So 
So there we have a zhuzhed up cape. It's got a bit of texture, a bit of pattern, a bit of shimmer and shine, and that would sit on there. I like that and look lovely. So another way to create an embossed texture is to use a stencil. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take party dress and blend it fairly lightly onto this piece of mixed media paper. This stencil which is a similar design to the embossing folder and I'm sticking it down because I'm going to blend through it but then I'm also going to run it through my die cutting machine and I don't want it to move when I do that so I can come in a bit heavier now to get a darker pink through the holes in the stencil so now I'm going to emboss with my stencil and for my cutting sandwich, I use a thick plate, a shim, one of the cutting plates, then the rubber mat, and then this piece here, and then the other cutting plate. And I hope you can see on the back there that there is some embossing. It's a little difficult to catch on camera from the front because of all the ink blending. But the darker bits are raised up. And now I can cut my die cuts from this, just trying to see if I can get a relatively symmetrical cut. So there we have our three layers of cake and we can glue those together. And to add the little drops, the little fondant icing balls, can use Nouveau Drops. So I've got gold here because I don't have any silver ones and I'm just squeezing it ever so slightly and then pressing down in the gaps. So I'm not getting big domed drops, just little splodges which will flatten out and give a nice dimensional shimmery appearance. And there's the cake sitting on the front of a card. I really like that. You've got a little bit of dimension from the embossing with the stencil, plus the variation in saturation with the blending. And you've got lovely little gold drops on there to add some bling. So I've got this very old rubber stamp, which doesn't have any backing to it. So what I do when I've got a stamp like this is I just put some stick glue on it, make sure I get right into the corners. Uh, that will wash off later when I've finished. It will go in just some warm soapy water and that will stick nicely on the door and shouldn't shift around. I'm gonna treat my paper with some corn flour to get rid of any greasy fingerprints, any marks, any static, etc. I'm going to ink this up really well with some embossing ink. And I'm going to do that a couple of times because I find sometimes with this stamp the circles in the middle don't transfer particularly brilliantly and to emboss I've got some super fine silver embossing powder and that has come out really well so I've got plenty of circles that are fully formed you can see here some haven't uh, stuck so well but I don't need the whole piece just knock off the bits I don't want So now that's all cooled and set, we can add our dies and cut from it. Now we can colour our cake layers by simply blending over the silver embossing.
now that's done I'm just going to go over it with a microfiber cloth I probably should have done that before I glued it all together but that just takes any uh, ink that's sitting on the gold the silver spots not the gold spots and now we have another cake this time with spots on so here we have four cakes a very simple one with just blending and then we've got our embossing folder our stencil and our heat embossing this is one I made earlier with the stencil technique I did it in a different color I think it was pixie dust and instead of gold nouveau drops I used glitter drops in white blizzard to do the little dots and they've got a lovely little bit of glitter but what they've also done is absorbed some of the colour from the ink beneath so they've got a, a really pretty pink tint to them so that's another thing you could do you could use clear ones white ones would absorb the colour as well so they would be uh, a shade or a tint of the colour that you'd use underneath and another thing you could do if you wanted to add a crisscross pattern, if you didn't have any embossing folders, stencils or stamps, you could just hand draw it on. You could use a ruler or you could go for a wibbly wobbly look. And I've just got here a white gel pen and that's going to absorb some of the ink beneath and tint a pink colour. So there we have our little crisscross and we can go in with oops some very small drops of white nouveau drops or any other color that you like again just gently squeeze the bottle so there is a slow consistent flow and then you can just push it down and put it straight back up again and these will tint the same color as the ink and of course if you want your white gel pen and your white nouveau drops to stay white then use colored cardstock it doesn't have to be ink blended you'll get a more solid color to the cake and the white things that you add on top will stay white they won't absorb any of the ink and here i've got an acrylic pen this is a cheap version of a Posca paint pen, but I actually prefer these. They seem to be more consistent, more reliable than Posca paint pens, I find. It's Crawford and Black, and I got it from the works, I think. And you can use these to add your wobbly lines or your straight lines if you use a ruler. And you'll get a thicker line than you would if you used a gel pen. But again, these will absorb the ink that's on the paper and change colour. So if you want a white, white line, then use coloured cardstock. So I think I can get away with mixing, matching some of the sizes of these pearls. So if I put smaller ones on the top layer and then medium sized ones on the middle layer and big ones on the bottom layer that will add a little bit of interest the thing with the hand drawn ones which may be a plus or a minus depending on your point of view is that you don't get such neat rows of pearls or drops or whatever you put on there they're a bit wonky but you might be uh, more adept at drawing your crisscrosses than me. I think this is a great way to use up things like pearls or gems because I don't know about you, but I get them and use them on a few projects and then just sort of sit in my stash for ages and ages. And eventually the glue on the back stops being sticky and you have to use, you know, liquid glue to stick them down. But I think a project like this where you're going to use lots of them is a great way to get them out of your stash and on your cards so there we go we have now got one card but one two three four five six seven cakes 
I wonder which one is your favourite cake. When I started, this one was my favourite idea and I really like the way this turned out. But I think I love these pearl things on the cake. So I think if I was going to do this in future, I'd probably do the embossing folder technique, but make sure I had some really tiny pearls that I could stick on the cake. Right, I think that will do for today. Thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed the card making and the cake making. If you have, do leave a thumbs up. Do let me know in the comments. Like and subscribe. And I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.